Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. A 19 year old woman is the latest person to fall victim to the cult of gender ideology. This is an example of how it can affect anybody. Even if you ask an honest question about why certain things are necessary, why is it necessary to put pronouns in your email bio? Why is it necessary for somebody who is clearly female to tell the world that her pronouns are she, her or whatever? You ask a simple question and inquire as to why that is necessary. You may find yourself in trouble. You may find yourself losing your job. So this case today is a woman who volunteers the MS Society. She claimed that she ended up losing that position because she dared to question the use or why it was necessary to use pronouns or to include pronouns. And as you can imagine, this organization faced a lot of backlash. Did they apologize? Did they backtrack? But it appears that they're actually doubling down on ousting a 90 year old volunteer, an elderly lady who simply wants to help people dealing with MS, a very serious autoimmune condition. An elderly California woman claims she was forced to step down from her volunteer position of 60 years after she asked for clarity on the use of pronouns. Fran Itkoff, the 90-year-old leader of the Lakewood Long Beach Self-Help Group, was told her organisation would no longer be affiliated with the National MS Society after her failure to abide by our diversity, equity and inclusion guidelines. Itkoff, who has won multiple awards for her and her husband's work with the organisation, became confused one day after she saw several people sign their emails and letters with their names along with their chosen pronouns. I was confused. I didn't know what it was, what it meant. Uh, and I'd seen it on a couple of uh, letters that had come in after the person's name, they had the pronouns, but I didn't know what that meant. And so finally, I, when I was talking to her, I thought I'll ask, what does it mean? And uh, you know, let her tell me. And so she said that meant that they were inclu all inclusive, which didn't make sense to me because it, it sounds like you're uh, uh, labeling or labeling uh, for females and not males. If you're just putting in she, her. She or, said that she was just asking her what it meant to have a conversation. So as a 90 year old who didn't know what it meant, you know, she's not street savvy <laughs> to find out what it meant. Yeah. And when she said that they were required to use it to be inclusive. And my mom was saying I, I, that we've always been the MS Society as a whole and the Long and Beach group. Yeah, group has just always been inclusive. So she didn't necessarily object to the use of the pronouns in the bios. She simply asked, what is this? And this is a 90 year old woman. She hasn't lived through this whole gender ideology cult. She hasn't lived through this era where people trans transition children and things like that, where men dominate women's sports this is a 90 year old woman show a bit of grace why would you perceive that to be a threat a 90 year old woman asking a simple question in her mind and in the mind of anybody who's just normal <laughs> you don't have to say these are my pronouns when everybody knows you're a woman when everybody knows you're a man usually if i receive an email from somebody called ben i assume they're male I don't need him to put his pronouns in his bio. Usually people only need to look to know whether somebody is male or female. So she's thinking, why is this necessary? Especially for people who do not identify as trans. The majority of people don't, believe it or not. The vast majority of people don't need you to use certain pronouns to validate their identity. You just look at them and you know whether they're male or female. You do it without even thinking. And that's why some people end up getting themselves, you know, into trouble and some people end up taking on offense. So she asked the question and apparently that was enough to send her an email, a cold email, not too long after that, telling her that her services are no longer needed as a volunteer for over 60 years, continuing the work of her husband. Another reason why she was confused and even questioned the use of the word inclusive was because MS is a disease that doesn't discriminate, whether you're male or female. I think women are more representative of 
people who are diagnosed with the condition. I think it does affect women more, but it can happen to anybody, regardless of your gender, regardless of your sex. So the whole idea of inclusion, she's saying that as an organization, they have always been inclusive because it can affect anyone. It can affect people from all walks of life, male or female. So the email she received said the following, Dear Fran, I hope this email finds you well. We appreciate your dedication and contribution as a self-help group leader with our organization. As we've discussed earlier during our phone conversation, after a thorough review of our guidelines and standards, it has come to our attention that there has been a failure to abide by our diversity, equity and inclusion guidelines during your time as a volunteer. Unfortunately, based on the situation, we have made the difficult decision to have you step down from your volunteer position effective immediately. Although the Lakewood Long Beach self-help group will no longer be formally affiliated with our organization, we want to emphasize that this does not mean the end of your group's activities. You are still more than welcome to continue meeting independently from the society. Absolutely cold, heartless and ruthless sending a 90 year old woman that email simply because she asked a question that triggered somebody. So asking questions now is highly offensive. You're not even allowed to question gender ideology. You're not even allowed to give your thoughts. You're going against their diversity, equity and inclusion policy. They want people who just play along. Don't even dare ask why, just play along. If we tell you that you're gonna tattoo she, her on your forehead, just do it. If we tell you that this dude, six foot four dude, standing in front of you as a woman, you better refer to him as she, her, or you're gone. Don't ask questions. An organization that is dealing with a condition that requires compassion, understanding, that requires people to ask questions because there's a lot of things that people don't know about MS. So you would think as an organization, they're used to people asking questions and don't find it so offensive. Where's the compassion? Where's the respect towards somebody who has been in the organization, who has been volunteering in partnership with the organization for over 60 years? Where's the basic common human decency? This doesn't sound very charitable. It doesn't sound very compassionate. Doesn't sound understanding. Doesn't sound very patient doesn't sound very kind. And I don't even consider the fact that this is somebody in their 90s who grew up in a completely different time, who lived in a completely different world than the one we're living in today. No understanding, no consideration for that at all. We all have to think like Gen Z or we're out. There's no respect for somebody who is of that generation who doesn't think the same as people today. They don't. They were perfectly fine. For all the things that they went through, everything they survived, you know, when they went off to war and they were writing letters back to their loved ones, they were able to survive just fine without telling people their pronouns. They were able to get through life with everything they had to face, real problems. They were able to, to do that without the use of pronouns. So excuse me if I ask why at the age of 90. A few days after the conversation, on Friday at 4.58 p.m., Ikoff received her pink slip. At the end of the day, end of the week, I got an email from her saying they were sorry, but they had to ask me to step down as a volunteer for the MS Society. The verbiage, she said, was you didn't abide by their diversity, equity and inclusion. So they had to ask her to step down and she can't be a part of the MS Society as a volunteer. Ikoff's daughter, Elle Hamilton, said. And of course, she pointed out the hypocrisy of this organization to say that this is under the guise of inclusion, yet they had no problem excluding a 90-year-old woman who has volunteered for 60 years, the majority of her life. They had no problem excluding her in a heartbeat. They didn't even give her, you know, like a warning or sit her down and discuss it, nothing. They terminated her volunteer position, her ties with the organization. They terminated it effective immediately, yet they claim that they're all for inclusion. They're only for the inclusion that suits them. They're only for the inclusion 
that pushes their agenda, that pushes their belief system. Anyone who falls outside of that is absolutely excluded and even treated like they're a threat. And she said that it completely shocked her. She couldn't believe what she was reading. She had to read it a couple of times to understand if she was reading it correctly, if this is exactly what I think it is. I can imagine her thinking, what is going on? What did I do? What did I do that was so bad that you're going to terminate my position as a volunteer effective immediately, regardless of how many decades into helping and partnering with your organization? She has won awards for her volunteering efforts, for the work that her organization does. She took over from her husband, so it's a legacy that she is continuing. And they were willing to toss all of that aside because of diversity, equity, and inclusion. When there was no threat towards diversity, equity, and inclusion, it was just a simple question. Most people wonder why it's necessary, but they just go along with it. They dare not question it, they dare not ask why. Because we see now, the repercussions of that. There were people who had their jobs put on the line because they didn't want to use pronouns in their bios. So Fran Ickoff won a Lifetime Achievement Award in 2008. She has won several awards for her volunteering work with the MS Society. Ickoff's husband was flown out of the White House to meet President Jimmy Carter while he was still in office after he won the National MS Father of the Year. Wow. And yet, her daughter said they are discriminating against her mother simply because she asked what pronouns mean. She saw she, her, and she was like, what does that mean? Her daughter also said, why is this the focus? When the focus should be why the charity was set up in the first place, to find a cure for this disease, to find a cure that will end people's suffering, to support people dealing with this disease. That should be their focus. Not diversity, equity, and inclusion really shouldn't. People who were dealing with MS didn't choose to be included. They were forced to be included. So we don't need the MS society to force any more inclusion because unfortunately they are dealing with that condition. They're dealing with an autoimmune condition that can be very debilitating. So they don't need to worry about inclusion. They don't need to focus on that. They need to focus on the purpose of the charity being set up in the first place which is to find a cure, which is to provide support for people dealing with this disease. So Libs of TikTok posted an update to the story saying, breaking, MS Society is doubling down on their decision to force a 90-year-old volunteer to step down for breaking their inclusion policies after she asked what pronouns are. They suggest the 90-year-old volunteer made people feel unsafe. They also warn staff not to comment or talk about it on social media. Unbelievable. This is how ridiculous and oversensitive people are today. This generation has become. A 90 year old woman is asking what pronouns are and that makes you feel unsafe. Do you think she felt very safe when she received that cold, callous, email basically dismissing all her hard work over decades i wouldn't have thought she felt very safe receiving that email knowing that everything she's worked towards has been thrown away now can you imagine receiving an email like that the shock of receiving an email like that when you've done nothing wrong but yet they're claiming that this elderly woman made them feel unsafe so the person who she asked the question to they're the ones who have gone off and basically got her position terminated because they were so offended that someone would dare ask what pronouns are i mean if that offends you in 2024 you really need help people need to deal with their issues they really do and not expect the rest of society to take responsibility for your feelings for how you choose to react to something least of all elderly people who should be respected how about we get back to respecting our elders and actually valuing people regardless of age. What about the inclusivity when it comes to age? Because some generations of people don't go along with this nonsense. Some generations of people genuinely do not understand 
all of these new ideologies that have cropped up over the years. They don't understand it. <laughs> they don't sit on TikTok all day and develop all these weird ideologies and start questioning whether they're male or female. They don't do that. So they don't understand. They're not going to understand automatically. And guess what? They may ask questions. Get over it. So the MS society seems to be doubling down. They're not remorseful for how they treated an elderly woman who has contributed to their organization. They're not remorseful about it. What I will say is if you're donating to charities, please do your research because most of these charities are hustles anyway, paying big salaries and paying for people's expenses. A lot of these charities end up being about that. So do your research, think local when it comes to these things, local, you know, organizations, you would find that your money probably goes a lot further. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I really wish Miss Ikoff, you know, and her daughter all the very best. I'm sorry that happened to her. I really am. It's so disheartening to hear that happening to people. It's so disrespectful and she didn't deserve that. She didn't deserve that. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.